Hi, and welcome back to That's So Nova. I'm glad to see everyone. Today we're going to do a... I always want to say something else and then something else pops in. Today we're going to do a sew along for the Catalina, uh, the Catalina Cross Body Sling from Aura Rosa. This is a very... It's a good bag to make. It makes me feel of spring. It could be because I'm tired of winter, but this feels like a spring and summer bag completely. This bag has, or you can have a, just a print showing. She has three different um, quilting designs, and I'm going to be doing one of the quilting designs with you. If you have made her um, Magdalena bag, this bag will come very easy to you and comfortable. There's binding. And there's really cute and unique pocket techniques. So we're going to get started right now. So as per normal with Aura Rosa, the, the pattern is super detailed. So from the first page, you're going to get a picture of the bag. You're going to get a brief synop synopsis. So it's a trend. It's on trend bag, has three quilting techniques. Like I said, it could be worn as a regular bag a cross body sling or even like for me i might use it as a hip bag i have wider hips but that can be adjusted with your cross bodies the cross body cross bodies generally are like 54 inches but you can make them larger or you can make them smaller to customize for you or your clientele um we're going to have there's a large slip pocket eight credit cards a zipper pocket and two slip two other slip pockets so it's a very decent size. So from the first page, the second page, you have all the tutorial links. There's other people other than me that have uh, different links. You have a variety of different people. They, there's the social media information. And on page three is a supply list. We're going to need four D rings and you can either use um, one inch or three fourths of an inch. You can go smaller or larger depending on the size that you want to. Um, we'll talk about that in certain parts. We're going to need two swivel clasps, one slider adjuster, and strap ends. Um, the rivet size are three-eighths of an inch, so you can get away with a small or a medium if you're using Emmeline like I am. A handmade tag or sew-in tag optional. You need a five number five zipper, and that's we need two of them that are the, the inches are listed on page three. And it has information about how much fabric you need for each project. There is a modern quilt, the classic diamond, and art deco. Today we're going to be doing the modern, modern quilt. But you're going to see if you go into the Aura Rosa um, show off group, there is some different um, designs. Like Lauren Mormino, please go see her um, YouTube tutorial on this. She makes this really cool one, and I. I feel so honored that I'm in the testing group and see people's bags. It looks like slime and it is amazing. And the vinyl looks, I want to know where she got her vinyl. So <laughs> it looks amazing. This um, pattern is for an adventurous intermediate, but I truly believe that anybody can make any kind of bag they want. If I can do it, you can do it. It just, it's a matter of patience and will. So on page five, it, there's a cut chart. Follow the cut chart exactly to the standings. I am using three fourths of an inch hardware, so all my measurements are going to be exactly what the cut chart is. If you want to have wider adjustments, the only part you would not try to change is the lower connector because it attaches to the bag to follow the directions per. But if you want a wider strap, you can definitely do that because it can clip onto um, it can clip onto the um, lower connectors. Page six shows you each design, the modern quilt, the classic diamond quilt, and the art deco. Personally, I want to do the art deco next, but I'm, I really like the way the modern window looks. On page seven and eight, you get the anatomy of the bag. You get to learn where the main panels are, the zipper panels, the lower connectors, so you can map out more. So before you go to the cut chart, Alexis is really good at, um, making a anatomy chart of the bag. Therefore, you can pick out your fabrics, if you want to mitch match, or you can kind of gauge what you want to do with the bag better. Inside, you see the slip pockets, the cards, um, the credit card slots, and what have you. This bag is perfect for on the go. Maybe that's why I'm thinking about summer. 
So you're going to have your panels. She's going to give you directions how to interface. And we are going to be starting with page 11, the modern quilt. So on the how you interface, the first one you're going to do is you're going to take your main panel and you're going to put, make sure you put your, um, your center marks on all four sides and even on the back. So on this side, we're going to use Decaville Heavy. As you can see, I did like a bright purple so you can see it. On the second one, you're not going to put the Decaville Heavy yet. You're going to take the two, you're going to take four pieces of Peltex. And I, as you can see, I have a line right here that are one fourth of an inch. You're going to fuse them on. And then you're going to take fleece. The, the, there are pattern pieces. You're going to take fleece and you're going to fuse that on. And you use a protective sheet over this because we're going to fuse this on now to our other main panel. And the reason why I mark all my centers is this, for this part right here. You, um, you want to get as close as possible to having it accurate so that you have, it doesn't get caught in your seam allowance and you'll be fine. Now, if you're like, Hey, you're, we're using Peltex and few and, um, batting or, um, fleece, this part's not going to fuse. And you're absolutely correct. When you go to page, most of these are, sorry, most of the, the page, she should, there's this very specific fusing and I will break down the anatomy once we get to that page. Um, so you see on figure 22 on page 17 is basically what I'm doing now. I'm trying, I'm adhering this balloon side to my vinyl and then I'm going to put double sided tape. I'm going to take double sided tape and put a piece here, here, and here out of my seam allowance. Okay. My little iron is still puffing up these seams. And we're going to put it on diagonally so that way it can adhere. I have like a love hate for this, um, this particular brand. And I can't remember where I got it from. I think I actually got it from a leather store. It sticks good, but it it's like incredibly hard to get the paper off. I'm like, <laughs> it's a challenge. It's not fun. So we're going to do that. And I'm just using some double side tape again and going diagonally. It just, it's going to adhere us when we, if there's no shifting when we do this next quilt part. The reason why I like this particular quilt design is it's pretty fast. You're only doing four lines of um, quilting. I'm still trying to get this tape off. I am not even, <laughs> um, it's, it does four lines of quilting. And it looks, it winds up looking really high end and chic. And I'm going to do a little uh, Mickey Mouse magnet in the middle ahead to give it a, a little more cuter look for, that I think is super cute. All right. After doing the impossible of taking that <laughs> paper off, we're going to go to the next part. So like I said, you're going to need all four centers. And then we are going to, can you hand me one of my rulers that are six by, it's clear, um, the magic, my husband, <laughs> yeah, that would be perfect, thank you. I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to measure in, we made all our marks, we're on page 19, we're going to first. Hold 
do the first part. There's very specific measurements on um, page 19. So I'm finding my one inch, one and five eighths of inch. And I'm going to do that up here too. And I'm using my, I'm going to use my Creative Grid ruler, but I usually use this cheap Westcott ruler. It has all the, the markings that show they're exactly one eighth of an inch. And it just literally makes my life a little bit easier. <laughs> so we're doing, we're measuring away from the center mark where we made our original mark. And we're going to connect those lines. And I'm using just a silver pen. And then we're going to align the, the, the centering marks that we made on the side. We're going to line these up. And we're going to make a mark from the where the, we just, we're going to stop where we the silver line is. Just stop and just stop. So we have our quilting design. All right. So the first row of stitches are going to be the, these lines going down. So we could back stitch, back stitch at the beginning and end to secure those stitches. I am going to use a number three stitch length. I usually like either the stitches to be extremely long or extremely short. There's like really no in between for me. <laughs> I'm using 40 weight thread, Sava. Trimming my thread. And we're going to go on this side and do the same thing. We're already halfway done with the quilting. All right. So we're going to have tells and we're going to green our needle down, not overlapping the row of threads that you just did vertically. We're going to start and follow the line. And you can back stitch at the end. But we're gonna pull these threads that we did in the center towards the back. Let me grab my handy dandy needle, pull the threads to the back. And I like to do this why I do it versus doing it all at the end because I've had my threads get tangled in with like why I'm stitching and then it's just like a hot mess. I like to do three or four stitches and then I cut. Oh, stop, not correct. Who's just paying attention? <laughs> so we're gonna do that again on the other side. So this Peltex that we used in the fleece, it's providing this bubble shape to give it this dimension. It's really clever because it never goes into your seam, your, your seam allowance. So it just gives that bag that extra depth. So I'm going to do three or four knots and you could do a couple things here. You can use, um, glue like, uh, like spray check, which I'm probably going to do. Or you can use a double-sided tape and just tape it down. Um, you know what? I'm going to just tape it in. Because for some reason, my fray check leaks like horribly. But it works really well. 
it could be a user error. So what I'm going to do right now, um, on page 20, on she has her logo tag here, like right here. I'm going to do it in the center. So I'm going to take a few clicks. And I'm going to find my center. And because I'm making a Mickey Mouse bag, I'm going real nautical. You can tell that I'm ready for spring. Because <laughs> um, the hardware is all, the bag is like all blue. It's Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. Alpha mats have these really cool and um, really cool and thumbs and thimbles have these really cool um, magnets and you can definitely use them as a magnet or you can do what I'm doing right now and like totally make it a logo. So I found the holes, but where I'm going to put it. Okay, I'm going to punch some holes real quick. Okay, I'm going to stick this Mickey head right over it. Okay, I'm going to grab my screwdriver. A little screw and it would help if I got the back of the Mickey head there it is <laughs> this helps anchor it the, the magnet down sorry I shifted it <laughs> you didn't see that. <laughs> this, I'm telling you, putting these little screws in takes most of my time up. Sewing, I could do all day long. So what I like to do is I like to put one screw in and not tighten it all the way. And then, so I have a little wiggle room. And what I can do is I can see how it's, it doesn't even want to lift up. I'm just dropping a little bit of glue in towards the end just to give it that extra security. But with the, to be honest with you, with the screws, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. I've been testing it out like all these last past two weeks. It's pretty cool. Okay, and I'm just going to tighten it. Okay. So with this, it's I'm not using it as a magnet, but I'm using it as an emblem. I'm making this a Mickey bag, and everything's tight. You could put a drop of fray check in there if you wish, but it's not going to go anywhere. All right. So now we're going to go on page. Okay, there's different page. They have the diamond, how you do the diamond, how you do the art deco. And now we are going to take our blank one that we just have the decals all heavy on 
and we're going to do get the two strap ends. Uh, the two, yeah, the two small strap ends. You know, off camera, I'll like literally organize this so that way I'm able to pull everything together, right? And then when I'm on camera, it does not want to work. <laughs> yeah, I'll, that one's not needed right now. So we gathering the main panel that has a Decoville, um, Decoville Heavy and then the two strap connectors and two rings. And again, I'm not going to list this double-sided tape because man <laughs> I am not a, it is it's sticky like I had nail polish on and it will take your nail polish off it's that that it's good that for but man taking off that paper it's like not fun I'm just going, I use a poly roller sometimes to just make sure that I, you can't iron, um, vinyl or it'll melt. Uh, so, I mean, you could do the back of it, but again, you're, that's with wrist. So what I'm doing instead is rolling it. So with a roller to one, make the tape adhere better. I fold it, you're folding the um the the connectors in half um onto itself toward the inner line. And I just roll it and it just it kind of just I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it makes it look better, gives it a more crisp look. Um we are going to you I'm sorry, we were supposed to I apologize. I skipped a part. We were supposed to, when we did the strap, and we we're supposed to go down the line. We, I'm sorry, we were supposed to go down one fourth of an inch down both sides on the strap connectors. See, that's what happens when you're in a rush. You don't do everything right. So I'm still at a three stitch length. I'm doing one fourth of an inch. And then I'm just going to feed the other one right after it. And then I'm going to take it and we're going to go on the other side and do one fourth of the inch as well. So I'm going to get my hardware I want to like I said I'm going for a real nautical thing so I want it like really bright silvers really chunky hardware because I want to go over the top So we're going to run some double sided tape on the wrong side for up to four inches, a four inch amount. I'm going to just take my ruler, go to four inches and then take some, it's a chalk pencil. And then I'm going to put some tape. Let's see. I seen someone on Facebook show how they have like a dispenser, uh, like a tape thing for the, not the one eighth of an inch, because I have one of those tape dispenser, but for like one fourth of an inch, they kind of put it on this really cool tape roll. And I was like, that is awesome because my double sided tape just collects string like nobody's business. All right. So we're going to. We are going to go 
page for you. We're going to position one inch above. One inch and fold down. One I'm using just a chalk. You can use a tandy leather pen or a silver pen. There's a lot of different names for it. All right. We are going to Okay, I'm positioning your rulers. So that way we can line these up perfectly. So 1 inch above and we're going to go in from the short side and put okay and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side just making a little graph <laughs> this is what it feels like like when you had to make graphs in school <laughs> It helps to get the the straps perfectly even, so it's a big help. All right. Then we're gonna go around. We're gonna simply go take a little bit of tape, put it down. Then we're going to. Draw our line where we're going to go over. So we're going to go up, across, and down. And you can back stitch if you at the ends in the beginning. And what I like to do is I like just like to get anything to help poke in those ends so that they get caught up in that stitch and they're not just like poking out. And when you stop, make sure you're down in the needle down position. Okay, so we're going to do it again. Take your time and just breathe. I know top stitching could be daunting, but this is part of the process and it could, it could be really fun. Because like, as you can see, I like to use different color thread. I love doing contrasting thread, even if my stitching is not perfect, it gives it some kind of character. Okay, got all those threads. Now we're going to put a rivet. And even though there's like the stitching to show where the rivet is, I still just draw a dot before I punch a hole because I have I have like royally messed up on rivets before. Still do. I am one with um, my removing rivets. And I'm just using a handheld one on a, um, a recovery mat so that way it will be okay. And I'm going to bring this over without giving me a concussion. 
<laughs> I have accidentally hit my head several times on that. <laughs> Wasn't my best moment. It's not punching through that last time. That's the only bad thing about these handheld ones is that sometimes it's spot on and other times it just, it punches like through a certain amount of layers and then not the rest. And that's not fun. So I like to punch it then when it does that and kind of twist it. All right. I'm going to set these rivets. And just, you can kind of feel the, the rivets get set in. Like it's a weird feeling. You can feel like the resistance just kind of goes down like it's compressing air. It's kind of cool. My rivet back down. We got our little cuteness. We're going to put this in the side and we're going to grab the, we're going to grab our exterior pocket and our exterior pocket lining. I can just keep dropping and I'm, you are going to see what I do is I cut out all the pieces and if some pieces look like they're too familiar I will like write in pen on the interfacing what the measurements are and what pocket it is so that way it's just easier for me you could put the labels but somehow some way my labels always get messed up so writing on the back generally does the trick for me <laughs> so we are going to pin this right sides together and if you have directional fabric, be very cognizant to make sure that this is going to be in the inside and you want it facing the correct direction. So you could put a couple clips, couple pins. If you're using vinyl, no pins. <laughs> and we're going to do the seam allowance, which is 3 eighths of an inch. My machine doesn't have that mark, so I use some wasabi tape. And back stitch is beginning in. Okay. We're going to fold this the exterior over like this, and we're going to top stitch. A one eighth of an inch. Okay, so Alexis Orosa does a lot of unique things, and sometimes you're in the back of your head, you're kind of questioning it, like this is this doesn't feel right. Just trust the process; <laughs> it all will work out. Okay, and we're gonna do get a ruler and two. We're gonna have five eighths of an inch in the corner. Hey Roxy. I know you're pretty. I'm trying to get your daddy. And we're going to top stitch. She's just wagging her tail. Slowly trying to get through. Hopefully, won't knock down wires. Can't get that way, so she's out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Top stitch. We're hearing my dog wag her tail and trying to. Like she's straight MacGyvering over the wires to get to the Kindle. Like that is his dog, a hundred percent. So we're gonna take what we just made. We are going to do our seam allowance, and it's gonna feel weird, but again, trust the process. So you have your top stitching. We're going to put wrong side, right sides together. I was gonna say wrong sides. That would totally mess you up. <laughs> right sides together. 
have our weird little burrito. We're going to use our seam allowance as three eighths of, three eighths of an inch. Make sure we backstitch at the beginning and end because we're going to turn our little burrito. Okay. All right. So we are going to have our little tube. We're going to turn it to right sides out. You know, you have like this cute little slip pocket now. It's just like, <laughs> okay, we're going to, we're going to measure a half inch up. I'm going to stick my ruler right here at a half inch. And we're going to place our pocket to make sure it does not go. past the half inch on the bottom. So I'm going to pop some clips in this to help me out to make sure that I am doing this right. Okay, so I'm in the pattern, we were going to sew this down first. So just make sure you have exactly at a half inch, even if you have to reposition it, position it, reposition it, it's okay. So we're gonna to top stitch this down at one eighth of an inch. All right, this is the part that gets funny because we're going to base this part in place. I don't, we're on page, um, sorry, I'm trying to turn pages and I can't. <laughs> we're on page 29. I based it from this side because I can see the curve and it's just, it's when I can see, when I visually can see it, I can do better because right here you have a, two, two rectangles that are like, you can't see the curve. So I, what I do is I go from the wrong side and then I just base it. Sometimes that doesn't work. See how that didn't get tacked down? I'm going to retack that. But I'm going to trim that off. It's just basting. You could base it um, at one fourth of an inch. And then you're just going to trim off any excess that doesn't fit in that curve or overlaps the short ends of the, of the pocket. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Okay. And we got this cute little pocket. Now we're going to um, put some rivet in here. It's going to be on, it's page 29, figure 7-3. Um, let's see. I'm going to get my little silver marking pen. And putting a rivet on 
Are you trying to help her get out? <laughs> she's stuck. She's wiring herself. I mean, she's like happy with her situation. <laughs> she just doesn't know how to MacGyver at that. <laughs> yeah she got through the wires but not you're like move your arm and she's like just wagging her tail like what do you mean that's the light yeah oh so the lighting incident that was Roxy not that wasn't magic <laughs> Roxy's a rescue dog. Um, she's six years old. She's half Rockwilder. We don't know what the other half is. Hope is to vent she's half Beagle because my daughter is obsessed with Beagle. Um, she is a really smart dog, but she's definitely Kendall's dog. Wherever Kendall is, that dog tries to get to. So that's what we're experiencing, and that's why the lighting went crazy. My dog is a... His name is Loki, and he is half... King Corso and half um, Great Dane. So he's called a Danif. There's like a whole community about it. So my husband's super happy about it. He wanted like a Scooby-Doo type dog forever. But the weird thing is, is Loki follows everything I said. He saying he's my protector. He's usually my shadow. Right now he's crate training while I'm doing the video because he is massive. He weighs like 120 pounds and he's eight months. And he likes to chew wires. He likes to jump on things and anywhere I'm at, he wants to be. So <sighs> he he's in this crate right now. I kind of miss him. All right. So we have this cute little pocket. Um, you can add something if you want. Like if I wanted to put like my, my little name logo, I can sew that down real quick. You know what? I'm going to do that because I have a cute tag. I put the Mickey Mouse thing. Let me take this little blue tag. I'm going to put some double-sided tape. I have... I, I support a lot of shops on Etsy. I love Etsy because I'm on Etsy. Um, so what I like to do is when I like to find useful stuff and I like a new unique tag. So I'll go buy some from different makers just to have something unique. So I am going to do a small row of stitching, making sure I back stitch. And it just has my business name on it, Nova's Knits. Because if somebody buys this for me and they're like, hey, what is that person's name that I bought this back from? It doesn't have my little normal medallion. So instead I have a cute little name tag and I'm all for that. So it's super cute, not in your face. It doesn't disturb the pocket. So we're good to go. So now we're going to grab our, um, we're going to do, we're going to start prepping for the zipper panel. We're going to need the lower gusset connector and the gusset. So here's my gusset and let me get the gusset connector. The gusset connector has two, um, it has two places that has a Decaville light on it to help secure and make sure that, um, when we put these connectors on it, that it's not going anywhere. Again, difficult tape. Oh my gosh. Wrong choices with double-sided tape. So we're going to fold this in on itself. Let me move this right here. Just fold this in. Yeah, I'm telling you though, this if you want a nail polish remover, this tape is the business because I have this really pretty... Um, rainbow like iridescent one that I was going to have on here and every time I want to use a double sided tape it would just like pull it off so imagine what it's doing to your nail bed because the nail polish is actually like protecting your nail bed okay so that's all right okay and I'm going to do a one fourth of an inch in the middle. 
before we we put top stitches on. Okay, again, I like to grab my roller. You can use any kind of poly roller that you have. It just, it's not getting the bubbles out. It just makes it look smoother to me. It could be just a figment of my imagination, but I really do feel like it looks smoother when I roll it out. So I'm gonna do a roll of stitching going one fourth of an inch first before I attach it on. I had one person ask me like how do I, how do I let my machine just fly? I tell people to practice on scraps all the time. By doing so you can get accustomed to your machine and how it feels. I had to today I ran out of bobbin. I did not win bobbin chicken. That sucks. It happens though. It's cool. Um it's better to happen now than like top stitching right so um I say practice on a piece of scrap and just let it fly so what happened today is that before I got to this machine I had to adjust it because the the vinyl that I'm using today is way lighter than I'm what I'm used to using and it was like I didn't like how the stitches look so you have to sit there and adjust your machine and this is when I say like you know be one with your machine so you can be comfortable enough just to let it fly. Okay. Got our stitches. Okay. So we're going to we're going to put D, uh, double sided tape all the way up here, and we're going to get our wings, and we're going to measure two inches in for both short ends. Get my Okay, and then I'm just going to find my center on here, and I'm just going to mark it. Okay, and once I have that, I'm going to find my center. And just center it out. Okay. 
Okay, you'll see me use a poly roller a lot. It's in place of um, not having not having um, an iron. I'm just triple checking before I do top stitching. That's the whole fun part of um, double sided tape. It can give you, it can give you an opportunity to um, fix any mistakes you have before. Oh yeah, I forgot. Mm, double sided tape. I'm making my where I'm gonna cross over. Okay. So I like to start in the um, in this, the middle, so that way when I pull the threads to the back, it just looks super clean to me. Have long tails. You're not back to think we're going to pull the threads to the back to give it a really nice finish. It's like a seamless finish, not that an area that has a lot of knots. When you get to the area to the part that you're gonna cross over, make sure your needle's in the needle down position. I'm just trying to, that yoga ball is super loud. <laughs> so I'm going to, now, I mean, like my machine didn't sound as so loud as that yoga ball. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. And just, just for, and for people on the internet, I did offer him one of my sewing chairs, but he chose a yoga ball. That makes sense. <laughs> I did. Just, so then you pull, you're going to take your threads. I like to take my tails and just kind of make sure that they're back and they're not going to get caught up in this. And I like to go, sometimes what I like to do is I, while my machine is, I put it in the needle down. I like to take my threads and kind of pull the beginning ones to the back already so I can make sure I can find the perfect hole. You don't have to do that. It's just something that I notice works easier for me is if I put my needle in the needle down, pull the, the threads that I had to start and then I'll just can go in that same hole. And it's just easier. So now I'm gonna take this yoga ball. <laughs> I'm gonna take this and pull these this other top stitch to the back. I'm going to make some knots. And again, you can use spray check or you can use um, any other glue or you can use double sided tape and just tape it down. I just did it. Then we're going to put a hole in the center and then mark it. I did not close that. There it is. Okay. Hold in the center. This always happens to me too. Whenever it gets full, just like pops out. All right. Okay, then I'm going to get two rivets. And 
it's always weird talking to the camera because normally when I'm sewing, I'm really quiet. I'm by myself. I'm zoned out. I'm in my therapy zone and I'm listening to true crime. Yeah, I know that sounds weird. Or I'm listening to a book from Audible and I like have so many different, like one of the books that I always listen to over and over and over again is The Name in the Wind by I don't know what it is about that book. It's just, it brings me to a whole different world and you just get captivated. So, and when I'm not doing that, I'm listening to true crime on YouTube, which may not be surprise, not a big surprise because if you watch my videos, you probably see me wearing some of their merch shirts because I like to support other YouTubers. <laughs> All right, so we have that part done. It'd also be cool if you had like rivets going all the way down, like if you had spikes or whatever. This is where you it's time for you to have some fun. So we're gonna grab now our zipper panel, our zipper pull, and our zipper tape. Not our rivets, Nova. Got these cute little Mickey Mouse ones that they're on a little airplane. Let's see. Pockets, little pockets. And our lining. And get some zipper tape. I'm going to burn the ends of my zipper tape because it's already fraying. And I'm going to measure it and cut it. Burn the ends of that. And then I'm going to Put on, nope, you know what? I'm gonna put, I like to put my zipper pulls on after <laughs> I stitch these to get the zipper panels together. So what you, what you can do is you're gonna take one zipper panel, do right sides together, and you're going to um, stitch it in place by doing it at one eighth of the inch. You could pop a couple clips in it if you wish, or um hold on to it it just it it all depends on what you feel the most secure with And then you're going to put the lining on there and then you're going to not have sewn off. You're going to sew these two layers together with the zipper sandwiched in the middle at three eighths of an inch. She really went over the stuff again. Okay. <laughs> Take this and pull this together or this is where your iron, as long as you don't hit the vinyl, do not hit the vinyl because you'd be like, well, you know, but you did it. And I'm be like, I told you not to hit the vinyl. So you can, <laughs> somebody will be like, you, you ironed the vinyl on the, on the cotton side. You're absolutely correct. I did. So you can give it a little heat just to keep it in place and then pop a couple like clips on it and we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. Oh, 
Okay, so we have one side and then we're gonna do this again on the other. Face down the right sides together of the zipper to the right sides of the zipper panel. And then I just like hold, hold it nice and taut as I'm um, doing it. And you, by all means, again, put some some wonder clips, hair clips, bobby pin. I seen someone do with bobby pins. I was super impressed by that. <laughs> That's the little things that make me happy. And then put the lining over it so it doesn't shift. And we're gonna just top stitch at not top stitch, baste baste it together or sew it together three eighths of an inch. Make sure you're back stitching. trimming threads then I'm going to take the vinyl and I'm going to hit it with the iron and it just helps it lay flat and also ironing helps set stitches I'm just going to pop a few clips in there, tug in the area that I think is not like going with shape. And we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch again. Now, can you do all of it in one felt swoop? Yes. But it's kind of like when you base the bag together, sometimes you can miss something if you don't do the most simplest step. So I am going to now put the zipper holes on there. I promise you, me and my threads, come on. All right. Put the zipper pull on the other side. It becomes easier. I know some people struggle with it. It just, practice makes perfect with zipper pulls. It, it takes a long time. Sometimes if you bring the first one you put up right to the top it will you can avoid getting that weird little bubble gap sometimes when you see double zipper pulls on as you can see i'm just feeding both of them in at the same time and then i push until i feel a click and then i pull if i feel like it's not even i still can take it off and redo it again and sometimes i know again it could be aggravating but it's worth it in the end when you have a nice clean zipper pull so it has no weird bubbles see no weird bubbles cute little bit all right so we top stitch now we're going to grab the gusset that we put aside and where is my lining gusset lining all right so we're going to put these two together. Okay, so I'm going to baste right, right sides together of the zipper panel and the gusset at one fourth of an inch not using the three eighths of the inseam allowance just yet. I just want to make sure that my panels are all aligned and there's nothing that's going to deter that. I, I am a big person that will tell, at first I used to hate 
the word base because I was like, I can just hold it and clip it and pin it all together. But then I realized that the reason for it is if one thing shifts, it can make your whole backpack or your whole bag look so different than what you wanted it to be and not in a good way. So now I'm going to line the lining on the top and lining and lining. And then I'm going to use a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch in the beginning and end. That's a year where I clean. <laughs> no, no, no. And then I'm going to clip this like on this side and I'm going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. Take your time, breathe. You got this. Let me get a t-shirt that says that. Take your time. Breathe. <laughs> We're going to, I'm going to do it again. Base the main exterior pieces together at one fourth of an inch. Because you don't want to appropriate your vinyl. That's why I'm doing it at one fourth of an inch. Or you can do it at one eighth of an inch. And it's different rows of stitching then. Okay, move these clips out of the way. Take my lining piece, put it on top, hold my tails, and go to the three eighths of an inch. Back stitching at the beginning and end. All right, so I'm going to turn this. Making sure that you tug, you want this to be as flat as possible. You don't want this to bunch or and get caught up in the top stitching. Hold your tails. And we're top stitching at one eighth of an inch. And All right. We have our gusset. We're going to, um, we're now our gusset's all circular. We're going to just, we took, we we're going to top speed. I'm sorry, I can't talk. We're going to baste this so it could be one unit and it doesn't shift. So I'm going to increase my stitches to five because it's just a base and I'm going to go at one eighth of an inch. Basting really does help. It makes sure that it, things don't shift and you're not like later like, okay, my lining looks 100% jacked up. Everything gets nice and tight. Okay, that's one side. And we do it on the other side real quick. It just, like I said, it keeps everything nice and close together. And it will save you heartache and pain if, like, you did, you put together your whole bag and you notice that the lining is poking out on one side because it was hard to clip. Back to putting our stitch length at three. Okay, getting all those threads. And man, do I have some threads. All right, so we're going to now put this aside. We're going to correct 
start making the main lining, zipper lining, we're going to grab one of our um, 8 by 7 I think eight by nine or eight by seven um, zipper pocket main lining backs. We're going to get the zipper pocket slip and the exterior and interior. So again, like you'll see, I write, I write each what, what each pocket does. I'm super. This is zipper pocket one. That's zipper pocket two. It just helps keep things like functional for me at least semi-functional like trying to be functional but maybe not <laughs> and we're going to grab two of our sides and here we go we're on page 34 oh we need our zipper pocket lining piece okay all right and i even wrote down the direction the direction because that's what i do all right, so we're going to get our zipper. It's Mickey Mouse. I told you it was going to be a Mickey Mouse bag. Oh. <laughs> we're going to get our zipper tape. <clears throat> yeah, it is super cute. I got it last year. Nope. I got it in 2020. No. Yeah, last year. <laughs> I'm going to burn the edges. So it doesn't fray. Well, not burn. Sear. <laughs> and then we're going to put our, separate these two. I know it's scary to do it. It's going to be satisfying. <laughs> we're going to take one. We're going to baste, machine baste this at one eighth of an inch. This is the lining pocket. I know. Follow the, follow the method to the madness. It's, it's going to be okay. Because at first I was like, oh, this is clever. Okay, just stay paper. Okay, one eighth of an inch, we're going to baste it. And move the pocket that wants to magically be in the way. This is a zipper lining piece. So you have the right side up of your zipper lining. You're going to put wrong side of the tape and you're going to see the teeth up, not down. Then we're going to get zipper pocket. I'm sorry, we're going to do this with both zippers. The teeth are going to face in towards each other. We're basing it down at one eighth of an inch. If I can grab my tails, that'd be awesome. Okay, let's go. Okay, so again, zipper pocket lining, the teeth are wrong side facing the right side of the lining, both teeth are facing towards each other. And then we're going to take a zipper pocket one, which I told you I wrote. It's the shorter pocket. And we're going to sew this in the top part. And it's important to follow what direction so that your zipper pocket doesn't look, if you have directional fabric, which I'm slowly beginning to realize that more and more, that's what fabric companies are doing. Like it's everything's directional. We're going to then Put this at three eighths of an inch. Back stitch. And then we're going to grab zipper pocket, zipper panel two. Make sure you have the correct direction. And we're going to do again three eighths of an inch. Okay. So we're going to take, I forgot to top stitch. We're going to top stitch. 
along the edge at one eighth of an inch. And you know what? I can actually press this. Okay, so I'm if you're using cotton woven, please press. It literally will make the bag look a hundred percent better. Sometimes it's just the little things that can hold a bag up. Pressing is pivotal when when um you're using cotton woven. You actually could I'm always giving the wrong thing. You can actually press the right side of waterproof canvas. It's just, you have to like, you really have to be cognizant because it is plastic. So you can't have heat in one section. So again, just like letting your, your uh, machine fly, practice makes purpose, per purpose. <laughs> practice makes perfect and you can just, um, maybe use a scrap piece from a previous project and test it out. You top stitch at one eighth of an inch. So now we have this cute little pocket <laughs> and we are going to, it's like a sandwich. There's a lining inside and this is the exterior and the interior. So we're going to put our zipper on it first. And we're going to pull it off and then we're going to put the zipper in the middle. I know it sounds like, why am I doing that? But it's important. So you're going to have a shorter pocket in the front. And you'll see why in just a moment. It's pretty cool. Like I said, just tr trust Alexa's process. When, you, when I was testing the bag, I do the same thing like, wait, this is not how I usually do things, but that's the whole thing about cool patterns. Learning new skills that you never had before that so you can use them while sewing bags. And she definitely does that. So we put it on and we're gonna pull it off. And then we're gonna put it back on and we're gonna put the zipper in the middle. So there, it's not a, a wide gap that can be sewn incorrectly. And put it in the middle. All right, so we're going to grab our little square and we're going to make sure that the eight is diagonal and seven inches is up. So we're going to put this right here. We are going to then. We're going to want to match the short ends with the tall ends and we're going to top stitch. So what happens is it's, it looks like this when the short ends don't meet. It's, there's a huge gap by pulling the short end to the taller one that's in the back. It gives it like a lip. <laughs> so this becomes a slip pocket as well. So we're going to top stitch this top part. At one eighth of an inch, so you can permanently have like that lip. It's probably called something else, but it's forever now going to be a lip to me. <laughs> and then it fits perfect. So we're going to base this around. You can do one eighth of an inch or one fourth of an inch. I tend to do one fourth. I don't know why.
trimming threads. So we're going to now grab the mirror image pieces and this is going to become our lining. So we're going to put this on the sides, matching raw edge to raw edge, pop a few clips in there so to make sure it doesn't shift. And we're going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch in the beginning and the end. And you can finger press or you could press, but it's really close to the vinyl. So I wouldn't press there. I would just take a, a poly roller and just roll out the seam. Just tug the fabric a little bit. And we're going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. All right. Same thing to this side. Pop some clips. Three eighths of an inch. Back stitch at beginning and end. Not accidentally clip into your fabric. I've already done that one. Tug it, you can press it as long as you don't hit the vinyl. Okay, so we have one side of our lining pocket already made. It's super cute. We've got our Mickey, we've got a nice slip pocket in here. We have a zipper pocket that you can put change dollars chapstick you name it so one's done now we're going to get down to the card slots the card slots is really funny to me because i always have like a sense of panic like i'm going to mess up but alexis made this super fun so it's and it's easy to do so the first measurement is right after um is on what is it it's on figure 112 we're going to find the first measurement and it's really funny because on her i just dropped a whole bunch of stuff on her um on her uh directions she highly advises to sorry i'm trying to make sure i find the exact half mark um to use a pin right and not a visible thank you not a visible ink uh not a visible ink but like the, not a heat uh erasing pen because you're gonna need to iron it and when you use like the heat erasable of course it it um it goes away so i'm using a bright pink pen so you can see so we're gonna from here this line she made it so fun like i'm not even not being like sarcastic she made the pattern pieces fun so they're like number one or two and you just basically trace this line from one and two that's it after you do the measurement you just trace the line and i was like oh my god this is so good you can do right one so in case you get like confused like I do I get confused over something about like something else comes to my attention or there's a post on Instagram or on Facebook I lose my attention and I'm like hey, what number was I on <laughs> two just right it just it's no one's gonna see the back of this now was she being telling you caution be very careful in your pen selection something that won't leak like i think gel pens will leak but i have like these permanent marker ones and i it didn't show through on the one the first tester bag so i'm just going with it 
no one will ever see these marks. They're just marks so that you can make sure you have the perfect card slot. And apparently my pens, all my pens are dying on me. Okay, that's sweet. And let me see. There is a really good um like anatomy of this card slot thing on page 37, figure 115. I'm going to I forgot to measure the measurement I need so I know where to stop. Okay. So this is two. That one's a heat one, babe. No, I, I got it. Don't worry. This one is going to do its job. Do its job. I'm going to make it. So this is one and two. Oh, can you, um, over there by my, my press station, it's probably on the floor, there's a metal ruler. You can get a hot ruler or there's these metal rulers that you get in, um, in, in, uh, I forgot what it's called. Like when you're doing dresses and stuff. It's, it, yeah, Dritz is hem thing. You can use this for hem, but I also love doing it on card slots because it can get hot without, and it won't ruin anything. It'll help with just getting everything aligned. So we're, the first one we're going to do is we're going to press in the seat, the five inch, five and a half inch part. Hit it with some steam. Okay. It's, it just, it weirdly works. So then I'm going to take this, find the first number one, and I'm going to press my hem ruler in here. I know I always come with weird tools, but I'm telling you, a lot of stuff from the quilting world and the garment world works so awesome with the bag making world. It all collides at the end. It all like works out. And you're you're basically going back and forth like an accordion. <laughs> and you just want to make sure everything lines up really well. That's super important. And then you just give me my hem ruler right on the line that we drew, and then I'm going to press it. Don't burn yourself. I say this when I burn myself like on a daily basis. I feel like if I don't burn myself by accident, that the project is not going to come out good. It's to that point now. <laughs> And it does take time and just be patient. It's going to, it's literally worth it. It's super worth it. See, if you would have had the visible ink pen, all these marks for the one and two spots would just be gone. And you could put the paper in these so that way, like if you don't have a hot ruler and you're like, hey, shoot, I don't have that, you can use the one and the two. Just follow the numbers that you wrote down and you can use the paper as a guideline to make sure everything stays straight. That's, it's a brilliant pattern because of simple things like that. I'm just giving you another option if you have this handy somewhere. And there's also a really cool one that I have. It's called a hot ruler and it's, it has all measurements on it and it's uh it feels kind of like felt but you can get it at your local 
um, craft stores like Joann's or Hobby Lobby's or Spotlight. I don't know what Spotlight is, but I hear a lot of people talking about it, so <laughs> I'm assuming they have the same thing. <laughs> And we're just pressing. Okay, so fair warning if you do get one of these hem things at like your local um, craft store, th this this sucker gets hot because you're putting some steam and heat and it it's retaining it. So um, I burn myself, like I said, a lot. So I have like a weird heat resistance. And that person will probably be like, oh my God, my fingers. So remember I told you it was hot. Do as I say, not as I do kind of scenario. <laughs> I'm gonna take my ruler out and I have like these beautiful card slots. So I'm just gonna give it another press because why not? And then we're going to, with these card slots, we have one, two, three, four, five. We're going to top stitch them. So I'm gonna take the first one. I'm doing one eighth of an inch. Top stitching. Each card slot. We have two more to go. Let me talk to you all wonky on that one, but nobody will know. <laughs> That's why I think I like gray thread so much because it just like blends effortlessly with everything. All right. So we trim in the threads, we're trimming the threads. All right, so I'm not rolling on the ball. Not rolling on the ball. All right. So we have all of it top stitch, hit it with the iron one more time. Give it some steam, because why not? All right. So we are going to do some measurements to ensure that we have the right size. We're going to measure one, two. We're going to do a center mark. Make sure that the card slots, I almost put the permanent pin. Um, I'm going to just draw on the top so we get card slots first and then we're going to trim it down. I like to do one, one or two stitches and then I go off and then come back and I like to have my hands. <sighs> I'm thinking what Lauren says is like a Ouija board because it literally is. I'm. <laughs> I wasn't trying to think like that, but your hands are kind of like in a diamond shape and you're holding down all the folds and you're just going to go down. And you have card slots. Now we're going to make sure that we're going to make it all even. We're going to cut off. We're going to measure four on each side. Okay. 
and cut off. That's not going to work. Can you give me a, the rotor, a rotary cutter, please? Because me trying to cut with scissors is going to make it not cool. Kendall, are you pay, you're not paying attention to me. Kendall, can I get a rotary? <laughs> can I get a rotary cutter, please? Thank you so much. Sorry. He's totally zoned out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so this would be forever on YouTube history. Like two years from now, someone's gonna look at this video and be like, "Oh, you see how you went to." <laughs> This is the awkward angle to do this at, so yeah, I'm gonna try my best though. <laughs> it's all gonna work out, I promise. I know it looks weird. Just bear with me. Okay. Oh yeah, let's see. Got the eight inches. Let me cut this down a little. All right, we have our card slots. We're gonna grab now that other piece of vinyl that's seven by eight. And we're going to trim this thread that's just like, hey, guess what? You didn't trim me. We're going to machine face. It's weird. I always think it's weird when you say machine base and I'm on a sewing machine. <laughs> I feel like it's weird. Okay, we're gonna base this on together. Uh, just make sure you're paying attention to each card slot so it doesn't like bend forward or bend in a wonky position because we all know card slots like to do that. Take your time. Like we're almost done. We're gonna get to the piping and we're gonna get all excited because this bag doesn't take a lo whole lot of time to put together. It, I actually feel like cutting out each piece and making sure that they're the right shape and the right measurements. And that could, that is, this is just me. I'm a person that struggles with measurements. I will be, I will take me forever just to cut it. Um, like a, like an eight by seven square because I'm gonna measure it a hundred times and make sure I have it right. We're going to grab these little side panels. There's one. Let's find the other one. So it's not me if I'm not missing a piece and popping pins all over the place. I'm looking for the other side panel. Did it fall on the floor over there? No, it's not the floor. Let me pick up the see. I'm gonna get this at three eighths of an inch. And then I'm gonna look for the other side panel.
Okay, I will be back with another side with my side panel. <laughs> okay, so we now have our panels and we're grabbing our exterior. Where my book wants to go. We're going to grab our exterior, um, our exterior uh, pieces and our interior panels. Got your cute ones. So for my front panel, I I put the card slot. You can do whatever you want. There's no wrong or right way. And I basted it together. So I'm about to take the exterior back and the zipper panel, and I'm going to put clips. Now you can use staple. We, if you've been on my channel, you know, I'm like secretly afraid of staples. <laughs> so, um, it's not so secret, but, um, I'm, a, I'm, I don't know. I'm a person that I wind up like a staple will just like fly off and hit me in the face or something. I'm always afraid of things going on. <laughs> and we're going to, I'm going to clip these pieces together. Just make sure they're going the same direction because I had to unbaste one my first bag because this is one direction and from the opposite of the other. And I was like, great, absolutely great. So what I like to do is after I clip everything together and I know everything fits, I go on the right side of the fabric and I'm going to machine baste that one eighth of an inch. Careful, careful, because you have like a zipper that's gonna automatically pull in the opposite direction from the machine. And then what I do is I look in the front and see if everything is good and then I just cut trim the thread and if there's a little bit of overage I'll just trim it up but there shouldn't be that <laughs> Alexis is one of my um, favorite patterns to do because her gussets fit to perfection and you're not like cutting it and doing weird stuff so now we, don't, we have these pieces and our main our main panel. We have our gusset and our main panel. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the gusset where the seams are matching and I'm going to mark my centers. This is why I, in the beginning I told you to mark your centers also on the panel. It just makes life a little bit easier. I'm going to turn this lining side out <clears throat> and I'm going to, I always like to start with the main one. I don't know why. So I'm, mark, I'm matching my center and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to mark my center. And I just start clipping. Because you basted everything in place, you're not really fighting with different fabrics to make a mold with you. They're just going to effortlessly kind of just sit in it because the way the Decaville heavy is the fabric wants to fold onto itself so it just makes it incredibly easy just to clip as you go 
And because I'm not stapling, I'm going to be using a whole lot of clips. If you use the correct seam allowance throughout the whole entire process, this is going to line up beautifully. You're going to be like, this is amazing. And I'll be like, right? <laughs> Take your time, clip. Make sure you're comfortable on how it looks. And I'm filling it. You can see it's in there. So with our first going around to baste it, basting um basting it to the bag, we're going to baste it at one fourth of an inch of this right purse. There's not a lot of layers, but if you're needle, or if you're having trouble, you might want to upgrade to a denim needle or a leather needle. Like go to 106, 100, in size six, one size 116, size 16 needle at 100. A Microtex. It all depends on what your machine is like willing to do. Get this purple thing. I like using the stiletto or the purple thing because it like it uh, winds up being the finger that does not get sewn. <laughs> Oops. Don't go too fast. Take your time. And if you stop. Stop in the needle down position. If you're going to staple, there's very fantastic pattern, I mean, fantastic instructions on like what single allowance you, you do, but you do need to have a pair of plier and remove the staples afterwards. It does, the staples work where you're not going to get any, none of the fabric shifting. So... When I get to my one fourth of an inch, I'm going to back stitch and I'm going to pull this uh, pull this out, trim the threads. And what I like to do right now, because the reason why I do the front panels, I can do this. And I can make sure that everything is caught in there. I can make sure that my my pieces on the sides match. I can visually see everything in there. Now I'm gonna go back and we're going to bind this. Okay. What I like to do um, to get a better rounded corner, I'll put a few snips not stitched, not into the stitch line, but below it. So that way when it gets turned completely out, that the ends are not like rolling in onto each other. 
it just it gives the, the seam allowance, it just gives the fabric to spread out a little bit easier. Okay, so I have my little binding doll and I am using binding that is exactly the same as the interior so that it blends seamlessly. What I like to do, um, and as you can tell, it is biased because there is a stretch. You want to stretch. If it's straight grain, you might get a couple of wrinkles, and that's not a problem. So what I like to do is I like to have a little bit of a tell, and I have I just fold my bias binding in half, and I'm going to put this on, and then use my seam allowance. And I, I, I don't sew this tail so I can sew it all together at the end. We're going to start with our seam allowance. And I, you can clip, but with, I don't know if this is because of quilting. Um, I just kind of tug the bias binding nice and taut. And then I just follow, make sure that the raw edges meet. And... Push and t pull and tug, because the, the 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 tauter you can get it, the more your binding is going to look nice and smooth inside your bag. Yes, is it inconvenient? Oh yeah, but is it worth it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now again, you can clip it or staple it in place. I. I just like to, I guess, freestyle, if you want to say. It doesn't always, it takes practice. It, sometimes it works out incredible, and other times I'm frustrated with it. Sometimes you just have to walk away for a little while from the project, so that way you're, you can have your sanity, and like you're not upset at the bag. <laughs> Just trust and believe, I get upset at my bags. I like binding because it gives, I feel like it gives the bag um, bones, it gives it structure. I have stray threads I'm, tr I'm trimming on the, on the way. Now you can buy you can buy double folded bias or I see a lot of people doing waterproof canvas because it you, it's just raw edge and it doesn't fray. That's an option too. I just prefer making my own binding because I just like the way it looks on a bag. So remember I had a tell that was kind of open what I'm going to do is I'm going to back stitch and I'm going to leave a gap I know you're going to be like what are you doing Shinova is it <laughs> I'm going to put these two pieces together and I'm going to put a clip there and I'm going to the longer you have your tail the easier it is I'm going to put these two pieces together I'm going to put a clip right there and I'm going to sew over these two pieces together so they overlap each other and then I can cut off this tail And then I'm gonna fold. Well, no, if I can. Now I'm gonna fold this over. And I'm just pulling it, making sure I cut all my lining. And I did. Thank you, sewing. <laughs> and then I'm going to now get clips because I need these to be. 
in place so I can catch, hide my stitching, my row of stitching for higher. I cut my, um, my binding at two and one fourth. If you're new to bind, just making your own binding, I definitely recommend doing two and a half. It gives you a little bit more room to play with. Two and a half versus two, uh, two and one fourth. And I'm just gonna, I'm just putting the, the clips sporadically in places because I plan on tugging it tight, taut against the seam when I get to certain places. So I'm going to smush my bag. And we're gonna bind this. And when you have, if you have to stop, just make sure you're stopped in a needle down position. I'm gonna get my stiletto so it could be the finger. The purple seam's not sharp enough to like just pull through, pull your um binding over. So I usually get a stiletto. And you're just trying to basically hide the previous row a line of stitching that you just did. So just pull it nice and taut and take your time. And breathe. Just breathe. When you make the bias binding the same as the lining, it just covers up so many of the, it just makes it look more cohesive to me. See, I'm getting threads out of the way so it doesn't get caught when I'm sewing and it's difficult later to try to pull them out. And just squish your bag. It's going to be fine. I promise. I'm squishing down my bag and having clips fly. And back stitch. Okay. So see, you have your binding all the way around and just get loose threads. This this uh, particular lining cotton, it is a frayer, man. Okay, so we have our binding all the way around and we do just a quick check to make sure the seams. This is gonna be a beautiful bag. All right, so I'm gonna be right back, and when I come back, magically, the second panel will be on, and then we go from there. So we, we put on both panels, we binded, and now we have the beauty of turning it right side out. So we're 
we're going to do on page 42. If you put staples, remove them with a pair of pliers, and you're good to go. We're going to turn, we're going to pinch the seams. I just like to pinch on the bottom and I just mold it. It's just a little hoaxing. Put your pan in and just poke out all this, the circles. Yeah. What I usually do is I like to roll the seams between my fingers just to give it that extra oomph. And you zip it up. Sorry, I used the lighter to burn off any stray threads because it's polyester thread. So we have our bag. What now you can bring your strap. Now, um, I've showed many straps. You're going to take your piece of fabric. And you're going to find your center. You're going to, you're going to draw it with chalk or what have you. So here's your strap of four. You're going to do your center, put your tape there. And I'll just use this tape that incredibly weird. I might like it later. So I'm not, I'm just, I need to test it out more. It's my first time using it. So you're going to fold your vinyl or fabric into each other, but leaving a small one eighth of an inch gap. From there, you fold it right sides on top of each other. You clip it and you go one eighth of an inch all the way down. Then there's instructions on how to put this in. You start with at the very end, you put the buckle. I put a rivet or you can stitch a box with an X in it for security. I slide another um, lobster clasp on it, put this through and attach the last lobster 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 uh, on the other end that is open and you put rivets on it. Now you can put um, hardware on it uh, as far as So I, you can put strap-ins on this, like I'm doing now. You slide it on. Oh, I forgot to put my Mickey Mouse tag in there. I'm telling you, there's always something. There's always a step I forget. Next time, you know, you're going to screw. in the strap to secure it. And you can put fray check on this after to make sure that, you know, the they make the screws stay put and they don't shift. And then you have a nice end. You have this, you can clip your Strap to. And that's it. You have it's short, sweet, to the point. You have a nice back slip pocket. You have credit card slots. You have zipper pockets. And you have this adorable shaped bag that you can wear as a sling. You can put, take this off and put it on the back and it'll stay closer to your body when you have it on a sling. You can have it wear in the front, wear in the back. And like I said, Depending on the strap size, like I have, I'm fluffy, so I probably would like to ex experiment with a one inch or one and a half inch, and it doesn't have to be this small. I actually like the three fourths of an inch because it's really dainty, and I think as a cross body bag, it's elegant yet then super functional. 
So here's the bag. And I'm so excited about this. And I can't wait to see everybody's bag. When you um, make it, make sure that you're in the Aura Rosa show off group and show it off. We want to see it. We want to experience your bag and everyone's different take. I can tell you now that they're, the testers are some amazing, amazing bags. There's going to be amazing bags that's going to give you nostalgia. There's going to be bags that you're going to be like, oh my God, that can run with Tory Burch or Vera Bradley. So have fun, experiment. And again, this bag is meant for a crossbody. It's meant for a sling. And I also think you could personally wear it on your hips. So I uh, like a fanny pack, like the summer when you go to a concert. So here's, here, here's the butte and that's it. I will leave where I got my zipper pulls, um, my zipper tape and this beautiful, um, fabric. This, this, I believe this is Mora and it's Navy or it's Rex, one of them from Emmeline bags. And I got my three fourths of an inch hardware from Lauren Mormino. My rivets are from Emmeline Bag. I actually won these zippers and they're from Zorel. And my Mickey Mouse is from Camelot that I purchased on fabric from Fabby, bleh, Fabric Candy Shopping. I want to say 2020 or 2019. I'm not too sure on that one. And I'm using 40 weight thread and it's silver um, or gray, whatever you feel fit. And that is it. So if you can like subscribe and comment down below it helps me out tremendously share if you think the video is worthy and please put in the comments of what you guys want to see next until we see you again and i hopefully will see you real soon i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you again bye